The weight of wishes. Ellie wiped her hand, sticky with melted popsicle, against the wooden fence, which later would be the culprit of a throbbing splinter in her finger. Ellie, a voice rang out from the porch above. It was her cousin. She'd snagged the last orange popsicle from Grandma's freezer. She peered around, then squeezed through the gap in the fence where a plank was missing into Ms. Harper's overgrown backyard. Spiderwebs clung to the shrubs, swaying in the humid air, their owners black, gangly, and ominously large. Last summer, Ellie's cousin had run right into one, flailing wildly before stripping down in terror. His Superman swim trunks still lay decaying in the yard, bleached by the sun. Either Ms. Harper no longer lived there, or she'd surrendered to the jungle of weeds and ivy. No one had heard her scold the kids all summer, but her yard still held a heavy silence, the kind that lingered like a lurking shadow, waiting to pounce. Ellie moved cautiously, every crunch of leaves amplifying the pounding of her pulse in her ears. Then came another crunch, distant but distinct. She froze, searching for the source. Through a gap in the far fence, a missing plank, came a sneaker, then a leg, a head of curly dark hair, wide eyes, and a startled gasp. Wait. Ellie half whispered, half shouted. Had she even spoken, or had he read her lips, her outstretched hand? He paused, half of him still on the other side of the fence like a photo cut in half. But then came his second leg, second sneaker, second arm. He was whole now, and he was staring back at her. The sliver of bathroom light beneath Ellie's bedroom door was like a blade. She lay in the dark, listening to the creak of the toilet lid, the rush of water, the soft thud of the bathroom cabinet closing. The strip of light vanished as grandma's muffled footsteps, slippers scuffing on carpet, retreated down the hall. As grandma's bedroom door clicked shut, Ellie slipped out of bed, diary and pen in hand. Folding herself onto the carpet beside the nightlight, she'd begun using again since her cousin made her watch a scary video on YouTube. The soft glow lit up her diary pages, and she began to write. Today, I met a boy in Ms. Harper's backyard. He came in through the hole in the fence where she used to live, and he said his dad moved in a few weeks ago, that he's here for the summer. His name's Jamie, and he has big, dark eyes, but the warm and shiny kind, like marbles. I wonder if he'll stay long enough for Christmas. I spent my allowance on the fancy crackers this year, the ones with little prizes. I think Jamie might like the tiny deck of cards or the plastic comb. He has nice, wavy hair, locks. Grandma would call them. I'll ask him about it tomorrow. He said he was having roast chicken for dinner and that he'd bring me the wishbone. Ellie shut her diary and climbed into bed, pulling the quilt over her head. What did you wish for? Ellie asked. Jamie wished that his dad would be kinder. It was automatic, a reflex. He didn't even have to think about it. It's what he wished for on birthdays, what he wished for when blowing dandelions, what he wished for on every shooting star he'd seen. But he just said, if I tell you, it won't come true, and buried the bone. Ellie decorated it with bits of bark, leaves, and flower petals, like she had once done with the graves of beetles she'd found, or the ladybugs she'd accidentally left in a jar without air holes. Why do you cut your hair? She asked, tugging at a blade of grass. Jamie shrugged. His dad had done it, said he looked like a girl with it long. Jamie looks so handsome with his hair cut short. Turn to the back of this diary to see my drawing of him. I'm not much of an artist, really, but I think I captured the sadness in his eyes. He has the face of someone who's lived through a lot, like he's older than he seems. He got the bigger half of the wishbone today. I wonder what he wished for. 
If I'd gotten it, I'd have wished for us to stay friends forever. If you look at the back of the diary, you'll see my sketch of the friendship bracelet I made him. I think he'll like it, he said. He likes blue. P.S. Jamie has a strawberry-scented yo-yo, and I've promised to show him my scratch and sniff stickers. Is that too tight? Ellie asked. It's perfect, Jamie replied, and she tied the bracelet around his wrist using the special knot she'd learned in Scouts. They'd even given her a badge for it, which she kept on her dresser. They sat in silence for a while, picking at blades of grass, drawing patterns in the dirt. Do you ever have trouble sleeping? Jamie asked, tracing a circle in the earth. Sometimes, Ellie said, I dream that everyone I love disappears. That's weird, Jamie said. Yup, Ellie replied. On those nights, she would bury her face in her pillow until she fell asleep with tear-streaked cheeks. What about you? She asked, but Jamie only shrugged and looked away. Jamie didn't like the coffee-scented sticker. He said it smelled gross, like dog food. I asked if he had actually smelled dog food, and he laughed so hard. Laughed. Grandma taught me that word yesterday when she gave me a piece of her chocolate-covered marshmallow. I told her she was as special as a rainbow. She liked that and the picture I drew of her. I used up all my silver glitter on it, but she said we'd buy more. I also told her about Jamie. She said it sounded a lot like friendship. She told me about the first time she met Grandpa, how he wore the ugliest shirt, but she fell in love with his smile. Jamie has a nice smile, and his eyelashes are thick like little brushes. Brushes. Jamie swung higher and higher on the swing, but all Ellie could see were the dark patches on his arms. Why do you have bruises on your arms? Ellie asked. I fell, Jamie mumbled. Jamie kept swinging, and all the while Ellie waited for him to open up, to tell her what had happened. And all the while, Jamie was hoping she'd ask again. If she asked again, maybe he'd tell her. If she asked again, he might crumble and spill out everything. But she didn't ask, she waited, and Jamie kept swinging. She didn't want to push him, he'd tell her when he was ready. He'd explain why he'd taken off the bracelet, surely. If only Ellie had known. Boys don't wear jewelry, his dad had told him. Jamie took off my bracelet, but I didn't say anything. Instead, I challenged him to an arm wrestle and lost. And then I ate a dandelion because that's what I always do when I lose. I wish he knew how much it hurt. I wish he knew I spent the whole afternoon planning a treasure hunt for him. Something red. Something blue. Something old. Something new. Something that rhymes with glove. There are 15 things on the list, and I can't wait to show him. I'd do anything to make him smile. I'm so tired of how he always seems sad. He's younger than me, but sometimes he acts like he's seen the whole world, like he's carrying all its weight. Grandma says I shouldn't say things like that because I don't understand the gravity of it. Gravity. P.S. the bruises on Jamie's arms, they looked painful. I'm waiting for him to trust me enough to share. I'm trying to be patient, the most patient, the patientest. Ellie sat on the swing in Ms. Harper's backyard, the rusty chains creaking in the humid air. She imagined even the spiders on their webs could hear it. She waited 10 minutes, 15, 20, an hour, her treasure hunt clues clutched tightly in her sweaty hands. Somewhere deep inside, she knew Jamie wouldn't come. Somewhere deep inside, she knew that if he had meant to, he would have been on time. Ellie tried to swallow down the knot at her throat as she tucked the treasure hunt clues back into her bag. She trudged through Miss Harper's backyard, past the thickening vines and spider webs. Her mind replayed the last time she'd seen Jamie, 
swinging back and forth, higher and higher. His face turned away. His laughter had sounded hollow that day, and he hadn't made eye contact, like he was looking beyond her, or through her. When she got home, she found Grandma in the kitchen, humming along to the radio as she kneaded dough. The kitchen smelled like warm bread and cinnamon. Ellie put on a smile that didn't quite reach her eyes. How's your friend Jamie? Grandma asked, catching Ellie off guard. Ellie tried to keep her voice steady. He's okay. Just busy, I guess. Grandma's hands paused in the dough, and she looked at Ellie with a knowing softness. It's okay to miss him, you know. And it's okay to tell him if you're worried. Ellie bit her lip, nodding even though she wasn't sure if it was true. If she told Jamie she missed him, would it push him away? And if she told him she was worried, would he feel like he had to explain? Or would he just shut her out even more? That night, she wrote a new diary entry under the glow of her nightlight, the words spilling onto the page before she could stop them. Dear Diary, I think I've lost Jamie, and I don't know how to get him back. I don't even know why I feel like it's my fault, but maybe I should have asked again about the bruises. Maybe I should have told him that he doesn't have to take off the bracelet just because his dad said so. Maybe, maybe I should have told him that I don't care if he looks like a girl with long hair because I like him exactly how he is. But what if it's too late now? What if he doesn't want to be friends anymore? I'm scared. Diary. I'm really, really scared. The next morning, Ellie woke up to a gray sky and the steady patter of rain against her window. The air felt heavy, like the weather was holding its breath and she felt that same weight in her chest as she got dressed. She thought about going to Ms. Harper's yard again, but the rain was falling so hard that it blurred the world outside. Instead, she stared out the window, wondering if Jamie was doing the same from his house. Was he trapped behind a window too, thinking about their secret meeting spot and all the things they never said to each other? She felt her hands itch to do something, anything. She grabbed a sheet of paper from her desk and a blue crayon, Jamie's favorite color. She drew a picture of them on the swings, Jamie smiling, and herself holding up the bracelet she'd made. She drew it like she wished things could be again. Then she folded the paper into a small square and tucked it into her backpack. By the time the rain stopped, the sun had already dipped low in the sky, casting long shadows across the backyard. Ellie slipped out of the house with the paper in her pocket. She made her way back to Ms. Harper's, her heart hammering as she climbed through the gap in the fence. The yard was damp, and the air was thick with the smell of wet earth. But as she reached the swings, she stopped short. There, sitting on one of the rusty seats, was Jamie. He was soaked through, his dark curls plastered to his forehead, and his sneakers squelched in the mud. For a moment, Ellie thought he looked like a stray cat, small and shivering, but pretending he didn't need help. He glanced up, surprise flickering across his face when he saw her. I didn't think you'd come, Ellie said, her voice barely a whisper. Jamie shrugged, trying to look nonchalant, but his eyes were rimmed with red, like he'd been crying. I didn't think you'd be here either. Without thinking, Ellie reached into her pocket and pulled out the folded drawing. She held it out to him with trembling hands. I made this for you. It's, it's dumb, but I thought you might like it. Jamie took the paper, unfolding it carefully. He stared at the drawing for a long time, his expression unreadable. Then, to Ellie's surprise, he smiled, a real smile, small but genuine. Thanks, Sully, he murmured, his voice thick with something she couldn't quite place. He brushed at his eyes with the back of his hand, but Ellie pretended not to notice. For a moment, they just sat there, 
the damp air swirling around them, the creak of the swings filling the silence. And maybe it wasn't enough to fix everything, but it felt like a start. Over the next few weeks, things between Ellie and Jamie went back to something like normal, but with a new kind of carefulness between them, like they were handling something fragile. They met in Ms. Harper's backyard every afternoon, playing games, making up stories, or just talking about the strange thoughts that came into their heads. Ellie never pressed Jamie about the bruises, and Jamie never brought up the bracelet again, but he started wearing it, tucked under the sleeve of his hoodie. One afternoon, as they sat under the big oak tree in Ms. Harper's yard, Jamie broke the silence. You know, I think I'm gonna miss this place when summer's over. Ellie's heart sank. She'd been trying not to think about the end of summer, trying not to imagine the empty swings, the quiet backyard without Jamie's voice. You're leaving? Jamie nodded, his gaze fixed on the ground. My dad got a new job in another state. He says it's a fresh start. A lump formed in Ellie's throat, but she forced herself to smile. Well, then you'll just have to write me letters and send me pictures of all the weird places you find. Jamie looked up, his eyes softening. I will. I promise. Ellie held out her pinky, and after a beat, Jamie hooked his around hers. They sealed the promise in silence, but something in Ellie's chest felt a little lighter. The day Jamie left, Ellie stood on the porch, clutching the friendship bracelet she'd made. It was worn now, the colors faded from summer sun and rain, but she held it tight in her hand like it was a lifeline. Jamie waved from the back seat of his dad's car as they drove away, and Ellie waved back, her smile watery but real. She ran to the backyard, through the gap in the fence, to the swing where they'd shared so many afternoons. She sat down, and for the first time, she let herself cry, big, messy tears that soaked her cheeks and dripped onto her shirt. She cried for the bruises she couldn't fix, for the summer that felt like it was slipping away, for the friendship that she wished could last forever. But as she looked up at the sky, the clouds parting to reveal a glimpse of blue, she remembered Jamie's promise. And she believed, just a little, that maybe they'd find their way back to each other again someday. And if they didn't, well, she'd still keep the memory of the summer when they swung together, when they whispered secrets, when they dreamed under the same sky. Ellie tucked the bracelet back into her pocket and headed home, knowing that even though Jamie was gone, the hope of their friendship lingered, like a wish waiting to come true.